Hey, it's Chris, and this past weekend, I had the chance to fly out to Chicago and visit the SCA, or Specialty Coffee Association, Expo 2024. And this year, I noticed a little bit of a trend in some of the new products, almost trying to balance a middle ground of being as automated as possible, with one end of the spectrum being straight up fully automated experiences, and the other with products like the new Xbloom Studio and fellow Aiden, creating an automated experience that's still highly customizable. Here are some of the most interesting products that I found at Expo this year. Starting with the new Fellow Aiden. As one Reddit comment so eloquently put it, Fellow has cornered the upper middle class millennial coffee drinker market so hard. The Aiden is Fellow's first foray into the batch brewer category, priced at $365, with a lot of new features that have yet to be explored in this category. It comes in the classic matte black finish, and if I remember correctly, was told that white would be an option. The Aiden has some really cool features between being able to switch from single serve to a 10 cup batch, and allowing instant temperature adjustment so you can bloom at one temp and brew at another. This machine allows you to control practically everything you would want, including brew temp, brew ratio, bloom ratio, bloom duration, bloom temperature, number of pulses, time between pulses, and pulse temperature. Now for a full walkthrough of the tech details, I would highly recommend watching a Brian Kwan's video featuring Nick from the fellow team, who gives the full rundown. From my understanding of this machine, and to sum it up extremely plainly, it's a batch brewer that also has the capability to operate as a single cup brewer, with practically every important brewing variable being adjustable. It follows the classic fellow design language, incorporating the familiar display and button found on the stag kettles. However, the handle design did change to this C shape, which is fine, but honestly I wish it kept the stag angled handle which in my opinion just looks a little bit more elegant. I was able to do a taste test of a brew from Kyle's September Coffee Roastery, one brewed by hand and the other by the Aiden, and honestly, both were extremely delicious. For $365, this batch and single brewer combo is packing a ton of tech and cool features, and at its price point, it's right up there competing against the Maka Master, Ratio, and Bravo Brewers. I did have one small concern, as seemingly the majority of the parts and pieces here are plastic, but before judging it too much, hopefully I can snag one of these for a future review. Next up is the new Xbloom Studio. This machine hovered around a third wave water booth, where I also had a chance to brew up a delicious anaerobic process geisha village from Tiny Arms Coffee Roasters, which is local to me here in Massachusetts. If you stopped by and had some of my brew, thank you and I hope you enjoyed. So the Xbloom Studio is the successor to the original Xbloom, which was for whatever bizarre reason announced on April Fool's Day as was the niche duo the year prior. Companies, please stop announcing stuff on April Fool's Day. The studio follows a similar design language and overall shape, but with lots of new features, and instead of relying solely on the RFID tags and the phone app, there are some dials that allow you to create a brew profile right on the machine itself. The new packaging also uses less waste by integrating the RFID tag on a card attached to each bag, which is a nice touch. The machine features the same grinder, but also now has a dosing cup element, which claims to have some unique properties to not need RDT at all, while still eliminating all chaff, and from my initial impressions, it seemed to work quite well. It is the same burrs found on the original X-Bloom, but with some changes that now claim this grinder can brew from espresso all the way to cold brew, and can act as a standalone grinder if you don't want the brew function Similarly, you can also use the machine as a standalone brewer if you want to use your own separate grinder. It does also have the capability to be plumbed in, making it suitable for automated brews in, let's say, a higher volume environment. The machine also has a new app that gives you way more real-time data, which is great to see, and the UI has been much improved, with way more functionality than the app had before. One thing I did notice, however, is similarly to the Aiden, it's a lot of plastic. As far as build quality goes, it's definitely a downgrade from the original. Again, it might not necessarily be a problem, but I'll have to get my hands on one to try out for sure. I did hear that the pricing will be lower than the existing X-Blue model, although no specific range was given. Despite all the new features and even the integrated scale which I just remembered about and almost glossed over. Given that the current model is about $800 brand new, I would expect this machine to land in the maybe $500 to $600 price range, which would make it a lot more compelling than a high-end batch brewer given its capabilities and the fact that it comes with a grinder. Similar to the Aiden, both these machines seem to aim to create a fully customized and repeatable brewing experience while being as automated as possible, 
In my mind, this demographic fits into an interesting niche. Anecdotally, most people I know that love brewing specialty coffee, or generally lighter roast, enjoy the ritualistic brewing aspect of it. The same group of people are the ones tweaking every aspect of the brew process, the temperatures, the grind size, the pouring method, and so on. But I get it. There are some mornings where you don't want to do the whole routine and just want a good cup of coffee. And that's where these types of products slot in. So I guess it's just a question of A, will you actually spend the time to dial in and create recipes for each bean that you go through, then choose to set it and forget it afterwards? And B, are you willing to pay for this convenience? I do hope to get my hands on both the Expo Studio as well as the fellow Aiden for a review. And those were really my two top products I saw at Expo, but I did want to highlight this incredibly cool robot cafe where these bots were basically doing everything from dosing, tamping, and pulling the shot to even doing the pour overs with, well, robot-like precision. At $55,000 a piece, they obviously aren't taking over the market anytime soon, but it is interesting to see that if these become more widely adopted. I know Onyx Coffee Labs, for example, has their own robot brewing booth or cafe somewhere in some airport. But apart from that, Expo was a ton of fun. It was great getting to go cafe hopping through the city, having a nice deep dish at Pequod's that was featured in The Bear, and most of all, meeting all the people that I had met at Boston Expo two years ago and newcomers that I've gotten to know through social media in the time since. But that's going to be my quick recap of Expo 2024, and I'm looking forward to covering this again next year in Houston, Texas. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to drop a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you in the next one.